Hey YouTube. Well, our long national hammock DIY nightmare is over. That's right. Costco now has a down throw blankets back in stock. And uh, I went down and got a half dozen of them. I'll probably pick up a few more before they stop selling them. And what you're about to see here is a video I, I thought of and rushed right down to the store and they had sold the last ones. I have been waiting since January of last year to do this video right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to build an underquilt that will take you down about 30 degrees. And I'll say something about that at the end of the video. Without using a sewing machine. I know a lot of folks have been feeling left out of this stuff, or they're unsure of whether or not they've got any sewing skills. Trust me, you really don't need that many of them. Uh, but this is done for you. This is something you can do without any special machines, except for a pair of these. And a little pokey holy that comes with this, okay? I used to recommend people go down to... Uh, Hobby Lobby to buy these, but Ripstop by the Roll has these now, uh, $14.95, dang good price at, at, at uh, Hobby Lobby, they're 20 bucks. Okay, so uh, Ripstop by the Roll has these, and they have the snaps. And do me a favor, that when you buy them, in the comments section, when you do, tell them that Sarge Vining sent you there to buy them. Ripstopbytheroll.com, I'll put it down here at the bottom of the screen so you can see it if you don't know about them. Now, one word of caution, okay? Snaps. They're the gateway drug into DIY, okay? If you are not careful, if you do not moderate yourself, you may find yourself in a couple of years hanging outside Joanne's fabric, stopping people as they go in saying, Hey, man, I gotta finish a stuff sack. Can you get me a couple of yards of grow grain? Be a bud, be a bud. Okay, just don't let it get that far, okay? I didn't. All I'm doing is spending hundreds of dollars and putting fabric in shelves over here because I might use it someday. Anyway, it's a simple project. What you need is four Costco down quilts, the double black diamond Costco down quilts. You need four of those. You need about 50, 60 feet of 8 inch diameter shock cord. You need four single eye cord locks and one double barrel cord lock. Okay? I'll tell you how to use those in the middle of the video. Alright? You with me? Okay. Let's go out to the gear assembly area and get this project started. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so for the first step, what we're going to do is we're going to fold over the first, the corner. Okay? We're going to take the pointy end of the corner and we're going to fold it over until it overlaps the lines of stitching, okay? We want to have enough room in the corner of this panel to stick one of these snaps in. Okay? We want to go a little bit further than those lines of stitching. Okay, there we go. Now, do that on all four corners. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the long edge and we're going to fold this seam until it reaches that row of stitching. Just like that. That, that button will, that snap, will remain exposed. Now, we're going to go through here, and we're going to go through all three layers. And again, we're not snapping anything together here. All we're doing is we're using these snaps instead of stitching. Then, you want to put one snap, you want to line up your stitching rows here, and you want to put one snap right there near that line of stitching. It can be on the line of stitching, to the right, to the left, doesn't really matter. Just put it there about a half inch from the edge. 
If you want to add another degree of functionality to your quilt, you could put female snaps along one edge, male snaps over on the other edge. You're going to do this all the way down both edges. And again, depending on what degree of functionality you want, you can use all male snaps, all female snaps, or set them up so that it can be folded over and snapped together as a sleeping bag. Okay, now once you've snapped it at every panel intersection, that's every five inches all the way down the length on both sides, now you're going to do the same thing to the ends. Okay, you're going to match up that line of stitching there and you're going to put a snap in right about there. You go through all those layers of quilt. And again, on this one here, you can add a degree of functionality by putting female snaps on this end, male snaps on that end. And then, you want to do the same thing down each end. About a half inch in, right at the intersection of the stitch lines after you've lined them up, and put a snap in. Okay, I brought it back inside here into the gear bunker because uh, things were getting real hot out there in the gear assembly area. It's uh, August in Texas and I'm making an underquilt. I ought to have my dang fool head examined. Anyway, I've got this done. Let me show you a couple of things though before you go into uh, finishing your quilt. Some things that you can do. Uh, if you want to make it more functional than just an underquilt. You know, in other words, how you can make it be a sleeping bag too. Come on down here and take a look. Okay, now down here at the narrow end, and again, let me repeat, if all you want to do is make an underquilt, you don't have to pay attention to these little details. However, if you want to increase the functionality of it and make it a sleeping bag, then what you can do is, uh, this is the end of the... Uh, quilt okay this is the 60 inch dimension and what I did was is if you look over here there's the corner where the side channel and the end channel are coming and when I put these snaps in I put all of these on the right hand side of the center line to the right of each one of these lines of stitching okay when I got to the center line of stitching, I put one female snap. These are all female snaps on this side. I put one female snap to the right of this line of stitching, and one male snap to the left. Then, when I continued my snaps down the left side, I used male snaps, and I put them to the left of the line of stitching. Okay, that way you can snap it together at the end and turn this into a 30 inch wide sleeping bag or about a 27 inch wide sleeping bag, 25 inch wide sleeping bag, something like that. Now, the other thing I did was is at the other end I made it so that I could, if I wanted to, snap this end to this end, okay? In that, on this side, I used male snaps to go to the female snaps, and those were all to the right of that line of snitching. And then when I got here, I just repeated that to the opposite. Now that would mean that I could, if I wanted to, I could make an elephant's foot or something like that by snapping this together, and then I would have a sleeping bag that is about 55 inches long by about 35 inches wide. Okay, you could put a small child in here. 
Okay? Now, I also did the same thing along the long edge. Okay? Here's the center stitch of the long edge. And I did exactly the same thing. Okay? Male snaps to the right on this edge. Female snaps to the left on this edge. And then when I got over here, I mirrored that. So now I can snap them together along the side. And this is what would make a regular sleeping bag. Okay? In that you would snap together the narrow end snap it together along the long end and then open it up so you can get inside and then snap it. Wouldn't be the best sleeping bag in the world but in case you need one it's there. I like these actually for watching television. But at any rate whether you decide to make it a standalone underquilt or if you want to make it a origami uh, sleeping bag like I did, your next step is going to be putting the rigging in here. Okay. Okay. For that, what we want to do first off is we want to look at the corner that we made here. This is the first snap where we folded the corner over diagonally. And these are the first snaps on each one of the channels. And, and that's what we built, is we built a channel down the side. This is essentially the steps you would take to make the channel... Uh, for the drawstring on a stuff sack, okay, where your shock cord goes in here, in either end, okay, uh, and then down the length of this channel. If we were doing this on the sewing machine, this would be sewn all the way down. But we've just used snaps in the place of thread, okay. Now, to finish rigging this as an underquilt, uh, rather than film a whole new segment, I'm going to direct you to my channel. And I'm going to get you to go to look at the uh, first underquilt build that I did. The DIY underquilt for the Costco uh, down blanket. You can watch the whole thing if you want to. Or you can skip to the last four or five minutes of it. Where I show you how to uh, put in the shock cord and cord locks on this system. And then there's another video called Rigging the Costco Down Quilt that'll show you how to put it on the hammock. Okay? All right, let's talk about how we make this a top quilt. Okay, to make this a top quilt, you're going to do essentially the same thing. You're just going to do less work. Okay? You're going to make one end channel. And then you're going to make Oh, about a 25 inch channel down here. Okay, and I would recommend putting two snaps, two or three snaps here. At the, you're going to go up one, two, three, four panels. You're going to put three snaps right here at the end of this channel. Okay, you're going to put male snaps on one side, female snaps on the other. Okay, and the reason why we'll put those three snaps there to get uh, right close together is that while you're sleeping, if your feet move, well, you might pop one of them out, but you might not pop this second or third one out, okay? And that'll keep your foot box about the right size. Okay, now, to make it a 30-degree top quilt, you make two of those, okay? And now you'll have, you put one inside the other, and there is your 30-degree top quilt, all right? Easy peasy. So far, we're $60 into this, we're 50 degrees on the underside. We're 30 degrees on the top side. Now let me go and show you how to make this 50 degree underquilt into a 30 degree underquilt with just one more Costco quilt. Okay? Let's go do that. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you now. This is not the quilt that you're going to see in the rest of the video. What happened was, is I, and I shot the video, and then I went in and I did what I'm about to do now, uh, and then came back out and filmed the rest of it. Well, when I looked at my editing, uh, the whole shot, the important part, was out of frame. So, I've got this blue quilt, and I'm going to make something else out of it later. 
I'm going to show you what you need to do because this is, this is important. This is the first step in, in making the booster. You're going to fold this in half the long ways. This right here is your 60 inch side. Okay? So you're going to fold it in half like that and then back it off about half of one of these panels. Okay, about two and a half inches. Then you're going to fold this over and you're going to put a snap in here at the corner and at each one of the lines of stitching. Line them up, put a snap in there. What you want to make sure you do is that you have the button heads all on one side and the snap heads all on the bottom. And you're going to do that on both sides. Okay? I sure hope I haven't confused you. There's nothing wrong with your, with your, your, your computer monitor or your phone, okay? We, we, we ain't, you, the colors aren't shifting on you. This is a different quilt, okay? Okay, so here's what we did. Of course, I went into the air conditioning business, but it's hot out here in the gear assembly area. And I'm using darker snaps because I ran out of the light colored snaps when I was doing the, uh, the underquilt. But all I did again was I folded this over and snapped it along the edges at near the seam of each one of these panels. So you're roughly five inches apart on all of these snaps, okay? Make sure that you get the button head all on the same side and snap head all on the other side, okay? Uh, you can use male snaps or female snaps, but I would recommend using all the same snaps all the way down. Now what we're going to do over here on the other side is exactly the same thing, okay? We're going to put a snap here at the corner the one at or near every seam. I'm going to go about an inch, half inch from the fold. Okay. And essentially what we've done is we've made a tube out of this. Okay. We're not going to put any snaps along the end. Okay. No snaps here. And what that will allow you to do is in extra cold situations, you would be able to slide a pad through the center here, okay, or one underneath, because what we're going to do is we're building this so that it can be snapped inside of our underquilt. So I'm going to go out, go back into the air conditioning, and I'm going to put a snap here along the edge, okay, we'll come back when that's done. Okay, here we are, we're real close to the end now. Uh, what I've done is I laid out the, the underquilt, the single layer underquilt. Uh, it's best to do this before you install the rigging, okay, so that you can lay this out flat. Sometimes when you put that rigging in there, it tends to curl things up, okay, so that's the first thing. This is the booster that we built, the little tube, okay. Just lay it down on there. One of the reasons why we folded it so that this is the 60 inch length is that when we folded over the channels on the long, at the end of the long side, we reduced that length, and now we're almost filling in the space between the edges of the two channels, okay? You want to lay this in here, center it as much as you can, and make sure that you're staggering the stitch lines, okay? You don't want to have one stitch line setting over the other in this direction or that direction. And that'll cut down on the uh, major drawback of this quilt, which is the sewn through construction that allows some cold air to get in where the layers are compressed and there's no down, okay? So just lay that in there and put in a snap of the opposite. This is a male snap here, so I'd want to put a female snap here, okay? Snap it in. All right. Now, I will tell you that this is the most difficult part of the project because when you go in here to, to put that second snap in, 
you're going to have to gather a lot of quilt before you can get to where you can compress the pliers to get that snap down. It's going to take you a little bit longer. What I did is I came in here and I laid this down and then I peeled up the uh, booster and made a dot with the marks a lot right there where I'm going to put my, my snap. Okay. One thing you want to make sure you don't do is set this up so that this is real tight. Okay. If you're going to make a mistake, make it so that this is loose in here. Okay. Uh, that'll, if you pull it tight, you're going to restrict the loft. Okay. And you don't want to do that. Okay. I blathered on. I'll go ahead and do that. We'll show you what it looks like at the end and do a little bit more talking. Okay. See you in a minute. Well, there we are. Finished. You've got three inches of loft in the middle, right where it counts, and an inch on the sides, which is pretty much going to hang above the sides of the hammock. Let's take it outside and see what it looks like. Well, there it is. The thermometer says 96 degrees, so I'm not going to get in this right now. I think I might uh, lengthen up the uh, shot cord on the end and drop it down just a little bit but this will keep me warm let's go talk about it well there you go now if you've got any questions about uh, this if I've left anything out if you are if you are confused about anything feel free to ask me okay I am available you can ask questions here on the channel you can go to my Facebook page Sarge Vining Facebook please like the page you can ask me a question there. You can go to hammockhangers.net, the internet forum for hammock hangers, strange as that may seem. Look for where this video is posted, because I'm going to post it there, and ask questions there. I will answer them, okay? Uh, if this has shown up in your Facebook feed, okay, ask the question there. I answer every single comment and question that I get throughout all the platforms where I post, okay? You also might want to go, uh, if you're on Google+, Plus, go search for my Google Plus uh, channel, uh, MYOG, and uh, take a look there. If you've got any favorite DIY videos, post them there, ask the questions. This video will be there too. Anyway, we're going to figure out some way, kind of way to give this away. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you, one of the other benefits of this. This right here, this is the entire underquilt system, okay? This is the underquilt and the booster, and it fits into one stuff sack, okay, that comes with a double black diamond throw. So it's almost like you're getting a stuff sack for free. Anyway, if that doesn't make you want to make one of these, I don't know what will. Now, I said this was a 30-degree system. A word about that. Uh, if you go to the uh, loft calculator at dreamhammocks.com, they've got a little calculator there to tell you how warm you'll be based on how much loft you've got in your uh, down system. Uh, the two inches of loft on the uh, top quilts that you'll build will get you about 30 degrees. Okay, The three inches of loft that you uh, have with the underquilt booster they say it will get you down to zero. Now, I'm not going to make that claim because I have used this system, except the one I use is sewn together with the machine, I have used this system down to 30 degrees and no lower. So I'm not going to make you a promise that I have not experienced myself. Also, uh, there's variability, personal variability, variability in, in, uh, in, in temperature readings. I can tell you that there are times when the reading at the airport says 40 degrees, but where you're camping it might be 30. Okay, so bear that in mind as well. Now, you don't have to build the top quilt that, that I show you here. You can go to my channel and, and you can look at for the uh, No Sew Top Quilt uh, series that I did there. There's three parts to that. And uh, uh, you can stop after you watch the second one because that shows you how to make the top quilt. The third video in that series shows how to make an under, under quilt booster just like we did. Okay. One of the advantages to making one of those 
uh, is that you can wear it around uh, camp. Okay, it's like a little cape. You can wear that around camp, filling it full of hot air before you get into your hammock. Okay, you have one inside your hammock, one that you're filling up with air, and then when you get in your hammock, you've got, you've got a pretty good start at charging up your, your uh, insulation system. Anyway, I have blathered on. This dang thing is over 20 minutes long. And what I should say is, right now is, we'll see you down the trail.